Um, yeah, just really grateful to be here. Um, for those of you who are not familiar with what spoken word is, it's actually um, poetry taken from its literary context and applied through a vocal medium, so it's, it can get pretty overwhelming, so I just wanted to explain the context of this film. Because when I was told the theme was democracy, I said what the average young adult in England at the moment would say. I, I said, democracy, what's that got to do with me? What's that? Because although I did study politics, you don't actually sit in, in the pub and talk about the first past the post electoral system, or you don't go up to a girl in the club and say, babes, who are you voting for this year? <laughs> no, you know what I mean? So I'm very familiar with the concept. So what I did was, um, I was an artist, essentially I'm an expressionist. So what I tried to do was, what we do is we take ideas and make them accessible to the average person. So what I tried to do was compare law with the laws of nature, something which I feel everyone can relate to, and I put it together in this piece, which is called Nature Practices Democracy, but Human Nature Does Not. So I really hope you enjoy it. I used to believe in freedom of speech until I had to pay my first phone bill. That's cool, because I heard reality only makes you stronger if it don't kill. Do you think nature cares more for the mountain or the molehill? Does it favour the rabbit that ploughs the earth when it's alive, or the one that fertilises the soil when it becomes roadkill? It appears the night and day don't discriminate. Imagine if the sun and moon had to debate labour over mandate, who was the best candidate to rise at the break of dawn? But then again, Based on how infrequently the sun shines in Britain, maybe that statement itself is debatable. But the above examples are merely to highlight that we are probably the species with the most autonomy in the whole of the Earth's geography. So why do we struggle with its philosophy to the point where it becomes a foreign ideology when even nature practices democracy? All I'm saying is that like a German football fan in a pub in Shoreditch during the 2010 World Cup matchup between the two countries, our human emotions and democracy find it difficult to coexist, causing us to make a mockery of this. So this raises the question, did Atticius Finch kill a mockingbird for a concept that doesn't really exist? Ironic how human nature and the laws of nature conflict. Our judgments are clouded by a lion's share of pride, rather than following the example of the lion and its pride. I used to believe in democracy, till my mum would give my sister the biggest chicken in the soup, simply because she was a lot bigger. And that's how we learnt democracy worked in our social groups, only hold value to the views of those who were most popular. And that's why we find it difficult to make any progress, and the adults didn't do much to facilitate the process, because we were always shot down at the first sign of protest. But when bees gather honey for the queen, they don't have to worry about pay cut possibly redundancy, a recession. Have you ever seen a rise in young bee unemployment? So if nature can get it right, maybe it's not the way we've been practicing it all along, but maybe it's the mentality we've adopted towards it, which is wrong. Because for us, it's not even about who or what we're voting for. It's more about what it represents and what we're hoping for. We're driven by emotions and our pride as people. But from the passenger seat, how much control do you really have to drive the vehicle? Because nature made some of us white and some of us black. Some of us skinny and some of us the opposite of that. But nature didn't make us discriminate, put bombs on our back, or station troops in foreign lands. The only nature that causes that is human nature, and that's all the facts. Do you know that red deer herds only move when 60% of the adults stand up, effectively voting with their feet? Both baboons and apes do not select a male leader until the females in the group have had a chance to look and decide. And the feminists will probably have a chuckle at that because we struggle in fact with a concept as simple as women's rights. We live in juxtaposition to the universe and its natural tendencies. So democracy works, but people don't. We'd rather focus on what divides us than what unites us, than what's inside us. Representing for the same spot where Mark Duggan was shot, where Damilola was stabbed, where Stephen Lawrence was dropped. When animals kill one another, it's either for survival or nourishment. When the rain beats down on the soil, it's merely to provide the seeds with some encouragement. Google the Baltic and the North Sea. Watch how they balance perfect with no need for establishment or congressman. Do you know the hermit crab does not grow its own shell? 
It wanders along and uses whatever it can for a shell, whether it be glass, bottles or cans. So effectively, this proved that recycling is also a naturalistic tendency and we struggle with that as well. I had an argument with my friend who stated that our consciousness has allowed us to become supreme beings on this earth. And I responded, but animals eat, sleep, spend time with their family each week, travel the earth as they please. I spend more time texting some people than we actually speak. So is this consciousness really a gift or a curse? So before we look at democracy, let's look at hypocrisy. And we should realize that every problem we have on this earth, we are the responsible ones. And the only law we need to work on implementing is our natural ones. Because nature practices democracy. Human nature, as of yet, does not. Um, it was brilliant. I want to ask you one very quick specific question about that film, but more generally, what gave you, I mean, I suppose the confidence and the idea in the first place to tap into this huge audience? Because basically, you've got a stage, haven't you? And people watching their millions. Um. Essentially, it was just a way to express myself, you know what I mean? To me, the YouTube became what the paper is, you know? It's just another way to get what was inside me out there to other people, and I enjoyed doing that. Whether it was two, two people watching or two million people, it would have been um, irrelative. It was just me expressing myself. The fact that I do have this audience, I guess it's just great. I'm just grateful for that, really. Yeah, amazing. And that backdrop of that specific film in the House of Parliament, it was the central lobby area yeah. of Parliament. Just out of interest, is that grandeur alienating to a lot of people? It was the backdrop to your film, so I thought I'd ask that, you know, in terms I of thought, engaging or... I personally thought it was a really cool building, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah just, <laughs> I, I, <laughs> um, in terms of, I, I don't think it's really alienating in that sense. A lot of people don't even know what it looks like inside, you know what I mean? But I think it was very cinematic, and I think that's the reason we chose it. Aside yeah. from that, I can't really tell you much. Okay. But I was just really impressed to be inside, man. Well, it was a brilliant film. And thanks very much Thank for coming much along. For having me. Thanks a lot. <laughs> <laughs>